Residence. Lewis dot structures may have more than one possible structure. It is because of hybridization due to delocalization of electrons, so the electrons can bond to more than one. Stability or more favorable structure is determined by formal charges. Here we have CO3 2 minus, the carbonate ion. Pause the video, draw the Lewis dot structure. So carbon is four electrons. There are three oxygens, each with six electrons. Since it's an anion, we need to add the two extra electrons equals 24. The least electronegative goes in the middle. That's my central atom. The oxygens are going to be spread outside. We're going to follow the octet rule for each of the elements. Oxygen has two from the bonded, so it needs six more electrons to fulfill the octet rule. This one also has two from the bonded. So it needs six more electrons to fulfill the octet rule. Here also it has two electrons from the bonded. It needs six more electrons or three pairs. Now I look at carbon. Carbon has six electrons from the bonded. It needs two more to fulfill the octet rule. So now if I count, I have two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26. The Lewis dot structure has 26 electrons, which does not match the valence electron. Therefore, this structure is incorrect. So the structure itself, Lewis dot has 26 electrons minus the valence electron, which is 24. There are two extra electrons. That means there's one extra bond. So we're gonna redraw the structure. Carbon, again, has to be in the middle because it's the least electronegative. And since they're all oxygens, I'm going to put a double bond on only one of the oxygen. Remember, we only need one extra bond. We all started with single bonds. So if there's one extra bond, it has to go to one of the oxygens. Just pick one. Again, I'm going to do the octet rule. So this oxygen has two from the bonded. It needs three more pairs of electrons or six electrons. The bottom one also has two from the bonded, and so it needs six more electrons or three pairs. The top one has four electrons from the bonded, so it only needs two more. And now I, we look at the central atom, which is carbon, and it already has eight from the bonded pairs. So now I'm going to go back and I'm going to count. So this is two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24. So this is a correct structure for CO3 2 minus. So I'm gonna clean up this structure a little bit so you can see better. So if I draw this structure, we have a double bond on one of the O's. How come the double bond can't be in the other O's? How do we know we need to choose the top one to have the double bond? So the double bond does not have to go to the top O. It could go into any of these oxygens. Since it could go to any of the oxygen, this CO3 2 minus will have a resonance structure. Separate resonance structure by a double headed arrow and we need to draw the other resonance structures. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate my double bond. So before it was on the top, now I'm going to bring it to the left. Again, filling the octet rule as I go along. 
And then there's one other possible structure. The double bond can be on the right oxygen. And we repeat the procedure following the octet rule. And it must satisfy the octet and match the total valence electron. And all these structures do. So for a carbonate, there are three possible structures. And these structures are resonance. Double bond could appear on any of the three oxygens. Since they could appear on any of the three oxygens, we draw all three possible structures. This is an ion. We need to put brackets with the charge on the outside. Brackets with the charge on the outside. Brackets with the charge on the outside. Pause the video. Draw the Lewis dot structure for N3 minus. If there are resonance structure, draw all the possible structures and then check your answer. There are three nitrogens. Nitrogen has five valence electron. Since it's a negative charge, I need to add an electron equals 16 electrons. Central atom is going to be nitrogen and they're going to be in a row. I'm going to fulfill the octet rule again. Nitrogen has two from the bonded, so we need to add six more to fulfill the octet rule. The outside nitrogen also has two from bonded, so it needs three more pairs to make eight. The central knot nitrogen has four from the bonded, so it needs two more pairs to make eight. So if we count, it's two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen. 18, 20. So we have 20 electrons. We have 20 electrons from the Lewis dot. So this structure is not correct because it does not match the total valence electrons. So 20 electrons minus 16 electrons equals to 4 electrons. So we have 4 electrons that we exceeded. Each, elect each bond has two electrons, so we have two extra bonds. There are two extra bonds, so I'm going to put two on each of the nitrogen. So it started with one, and each will get an extra. Now we're going to fulfill the octet rule again, as we did before. Nitrogen has four from the bonded, so it needs two more pairs. The outside nitrogen has four from the bonded, so it needs two more pairs. So that has eight. The central nitrogen has eight from the bonded, so we don't need to add any more. So now I'm going to count. Two, four, six, eight, ten, 12, 14, 16. This matches the total valence electron, so this structure is correct. I am going to redraw the structure. You do not have to redraw the structure. You could leave it with the circles. I do the circles to help you out to count correctly. However, if you leave it as this, the little red dots I put here, these dots, you need to erase. I just put these dots here to help you count. So those should be erased completely. If you leave it like this, I'm going to mark it wrong. So make sure the outside dots that I put here, you don't put it on yours. I just do it on the videos to help you count the eight. So I read you my list of structure, but there are more possibilities. You see if there's a double-double, I could do a single-triple or a triple-single. So this will have a resonance structure separated by the double-headed arrows. I'm going to have triple on the left side, a single on the right side. I'm going to fulfill the octet rule. So the left nitrogen already has six from the bonded, so it needs two more. So there's eight. Nitrogen on the right side has two from the bonded, so it needs six more electrons or three pairs to make eight. 
the central nitrogen already has eight from the bonded. So this fulfills the octet rule. So if I count the total number of electrons, there are six on my right side right here from the lone pairs plus the two from the bonded, so that's eight. We have six from the bonded here, so that's 14, plus two from the lone on the left side, so that's 16, so this is correct. If I have a triple single, I could also have a single triple. I could have a single triple. I'm gonna fulfill the octet rule again. The left one has two from the bonded, so it needs three more pairs or six more electrons. On the right side, it has six from the bonded. It only needs, it needs one lone pair or two more electrons. The central one has eight from the bonded. If you count the number of electrons, there's two, there's six from the bonded, so that's eight plus another two, which is 10, plus the six from the lone, so there's a total of 16, so it is correct. So N3 minus has three possible Lewis dot structure, and these are a ion. I need to put brackets with the charge outside. Brackets with the charge outside. You don't need that here anymore. Brackets with the charge outside. So if you keep this, this is a bracket with the charge outside. Pause the video, draw the Lewis dot structure and any resonance structure for the oxalate ion, and then check your answer. There are two carbons, each with four valence electrons. There are four oxygen with six valence electron. Since it's a negative charge, it has two extra electrons, total of 34. The central atom has to be carbon because it's the least electronegative. We have even number of atoms. It's usually symmetrical. Each of the carbons will get two of the oxygens. So we're gonna start with a single bond, each oxygen. And then we're gonna fulfill the octet rule. All the oxygens are gonna be the same because they all start with a single bond. I'm going to fulfill the octet rule, so each of the oxygen will need six more electrons or three more lone pairs. Now we're going to look at the carbon. The carbon has six bonded electrons, or three bonds, so there are six electrons, so it needs two more. This carbon is exactly the same. It has six bonded electrons, so it needs two more and everything has the octet rule. Now we're gonna count. As I mentioned earlier, I'm gonna put the marks in to help you count, but on the test or in class, you should not be putting the extra marks. The extra marks need to be erased or I will count them against you. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32, 34, 36, 38. So my Lewis dot structure has 38 electrons. My valence electron total was 34. So I know this structure is incorrect. They have to match. So 38 minus 34 gives us four extra electrons. That means there's two extra bonds. The two extra bonds can't go in the middle because carbon cannot exceed the octet rule because it doesn't have empty D orbitals. So it's gonna go to oxygens. So carbon again is gonna be in the middle. The top oxygen is gonna get two. The other top oxygen is gonna get two. Everything else is gonna get one. We're gonna fulfill the octet rule. The top oxygen already has four from the bonded, so it only needs two pairs of lone. The other one, the same thing, is two bonded. So there's four electrons, and it needs two more 
extra lone pairs to get make eight. The bottom ones only have two electrons from their one bonded, so it needs six more electrons or three lone pairs. Same goes with the one on the right bottom. If I look at my central atom, it's already fulfilled. This carbon already has eight, and so does this carbon because it, they're all from the bonded pair. So if I count, there's two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty, twenty-two, twenty-four, twenty-six, twenty-eight, thirty, thirty-two, thirty-four. So this is the correct structure of oxalate. And as I mentioned earlier, all these little marks that I made to count. If you have it on your paper, I will mark it wrong. I will count them as dot. You need to make sure you erase it or just don't mark it when you count. I put the marks there to help you visually see it. Since we have double bonds present here, since we place the double bonds on the top oxygen, how do you know it doesn't go on the bottom oxygen or on the sides? So we need to draw all the possible resonance structure. Since we put all the double bonds on the top, I'm going to now put the double bonds on the bottom. And as before, I'm going to fulfill the octet rule. So the top ones have two electrons from the bonded pair, so it needs six more electrons or three lone pairs for both. On the bottom oxygen, there are four from the bonded, pairs. On the bottom we have two bonded pairs or four electrons so we need two lone pairs or four electrons. And same on the opposite. The carbons need nothing because they have eight from the bonded, both of them. So we could also have bonds with double bonds on the opposite sides or a diagonal. So the top one has one bond on the left, so it has two electrons, so it needs six more to make eight. On the top right, it has four electrons from bonded, so it needs two more lone pairs to make eight. On the bottom right, it has one bond or two electrons, so it needs six more to make eight. And on the bottom left, it has four, so it needs two more pairs of lone pair to make eight. It is diagonal opposite. It could go diagonal on the other direction. The carbons already have eight from the bonded, so it doesn't need extra. And if you count all the electrons again, there it's going to be 34. Diagonal going one way, we could have diagonal going in the opposite way. So where there were double bonds, now there are single bonds. And where there are single bonds, there are double bonds. So the top left, it has four from the bonded pair, so I need four more. The top right, I have two from the bonded, so I need six more. On the bottom, it has four from the bonded, so it needs two more pairs. And then been on the bottom left, already has two from bonded, so it needs six more electrons or three pairs. If I look at my central atom, we have eight from the bonded and we have eight from the bonded so everything the octet rule is fulfilled it matches 34 if you count the electron if i look at the final structure i can't have a structure that looks like this for the following reason here i could fulfill the octet here i could fulfill the octet the central c's i could fulfill the octet for one of them but if I look at my central C right here on the right side, it already exceeds the octet. And carbon cannot exceed the octet, so this one is not possible. So these are the only possible resonance structures for oxalate. All the resonance structure must be separated by the double-headed arrow. And they all need brackets with the charge. Two minus brackets. Two minus brackets. Two minus and brackets. Two minus. So 
Oxalate has four possible resonance structures. Draw the Lewis cell structure for CH3CNO and all the possible resonance structure if there is any. There are two carbons with four valence electrons plus three hydrogen, each with one valence electron. Nitrogen has five and oxygen has six, a total of 22 electrons. The way this formula is written out is the way it's going to bond. The carbon is going to be surrounded by hydrogen. Then it's going to be combined with the next carbon. The carbon is going to be bonded to nitrogen, which is also bonded to oxygen here. So this is the general structure for it. Now I'm going to fulfill the octet rule or the duet rule. So hydrogen fulfilled the duet rule. Remember, hydrogen cannot exceed 2 because it only has an s orbital. And s orbitals can have maximum of 2. This hydrogen is fine. So is this hydrogen. It all fulfilled the duet rule. This carbon already has 8 and fulfilled the octet rule because it has 4 bond pairs. The second carbon only has 2 bonded. So there's four electrons, so I need four more, so that's eight. The nitrogen has two bonded, so it needs four more electrons to make eight. The oxygen has two bonded, so it needs six more to make eight. Now I need to count the number of electrons. All the duet and octet rule is fulfilled. We need to count the total valence electron. So there's 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26. So the Lewis style structure has 26 electrons. The total valence is 22, so this structure is incorrect. So 26 electrons minus 22 electrons, 4 extra electrons, so there are 2 extra bonds. The extra bonds cannot go to the first carbon because it already has 3 hydrogens and it has to bond to the other carbon. So the 2 extra bonds could go between CNN and NNO. My original structure on the left side is going to look the same. Carbon is going to attach to the other carbon. We can't have a double bond because if we do that, the carbon on the left exceeds the octet rule. And carbon does not have empty D orbitals to accommodate the extra electrons. So we're going to start with a double bond between C and N. We're going to place the other double bond between N and O. As before, we're going to fulfill the octet rule. We already know the hydrogens already fulfilled their duet rule. We also already know the carbon on the left has fulfilled the octet rule because it has four bonded pairs. So we're going to look at the second carbon here. This carbon has six electrons from the bonds, so it needs two extra. Nitrogen has four bonded pairs. So it's already fulfilled the octet. Oxygen has two bonded pairs, so it needs two extra lone pairs. So now we're going to count. So there's two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty, twenty-two. So this is the correct structure. It matches um, the total valence electrons from the beginning. So this can also have a resonance structure. Instead of having a double-double bond, it could have a triple-single bond. The left side is going to look the same. And we're going to have a triple between carbon and nitrogen and a single on the oxygen. So now if I look at my second carbon, it has fulfilled the octet rule from the four bonded. The nitrogen is also fulfilled because it has the four bonded. The oxygen has only two, 
So I need three lone pairs to fulfill the octet rule. Now you need to count the total valence electrons. So if I do that, that's two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22. So this matches the total valence electrons at the beginning. So this is also a possible Lewis dot structure for CH3CNO. Again, make sure you remove the marks if you plan to mark as you count. Since we had a double double and we had a triple single, we could also have a single triple. So the first part is going to be the same again on the left side because they can only make one bond. There's a single bond between carbon and nitrogen and I'm going to put a triple bond on oxygen. So oxygen only needs two more electrons to fulfill the octet rule. Nitrogen needs nothing because it already has right here four bonds so it has eight electrons. This carbon has two bonds so it has four electrons so it needs four more. So all the octet and duet rules are fulfilled. I'm going to count two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty, twenty-two. So this is a possible structure for CH3CNO. All the loose dot structures must be separated by a double-headed arrow. And this one does not need brackets because it is not an ion. Pause the video, um, draw the Lewis dot structure and any possible resonance structure for CHO2 minus, and then check your answer. There's one carbon, four valence electron, one hydrogen, one valence electron, two oxygens with six valence electron. Since it's a minus, we add that extra electron the total of 18 valence electrons. These electronegative goes in the middle, which is carbon. And I'm just going to draw it symmetrically. Each of the oxygen, if I look here, needs six more electrons because it has only two from the bonded. And both of the oxygens look the same. And the hydrogen is fine. It fulfilled the duet rule. If I look at the central atom, carbon, it has three bonded pairs, so it needs two more to make Eight. So I fulfilled the octet rule. Now I'm going to count 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. So this is an incorrect Lewis dot structure. We have 20 from the Lewis dot structure. Valence electron total was 18. So it exceeded by two electrons. So there is one extra bond. The only place that the extra bond can go to is one of the oxygens. So I'm going to choose an oxygen and make it a double bond. So the other one has to be a single bond. Hydrogen is already fulfilled. It only can take two, the duet rule. If I look at the oxygen with a double bond, it has four electrons that are bonded. So it needs two more. The other one has one bond pair. So it needs six more to fulfill the octet rule. And if I look at at my central atom, carbon, it's already fulfilled. It has four bonded pairs, which is eight electrons. And if I count the number of electrons, that's two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen. So this is the correct structure, CHO2 minus. Since I put the double bond to one of the oxygen, how do I know the double bond doesn't go to the other oxygen? So that means there is a resonance structure. The other structure will look very similar. So the double bond oxygen will get two more lone pairs because it already has four from the bonded. So it needs two lone pairs to make it eight. The one that has the single bond has two electrons. So it needs six more electrons or three more lone pairs. My central atom already has eight. So it's fulfilled count my electrons I have 18 so this is another possible resonance structure for CHO2 minus the double bond will never go to the hydrogen because hydrogen will exceed the duet rule the structure needs to be separated by double-headed arrow 
and since it's an ion you need to put brackets with the charge on the outside 